provide feedback, you can see the address and when you do it, it's open. So, okay, so hi again. Uh, I, I created, I want to tell you about the basic of, of packaging of RPM. So, this is really, really the beginning. So, how many of you uh, da created some RPM packages or package already? Raise your hand. Wow, a lot of you. So, I'm not sure if this will be helpful for you because this is really basic. Or another question: How many of you still struggle to know what those sections and tags in RPM specs are for? Are for what? Okay, so this is this is for you. <laughs> uh, okay, I, and I have to give the credits where needed. The slides are originally created by uh, by Spot. Uh, I'm, I'm using it because they are they are best. So okay, we will create uh, during this workshop uh, some uh, basic package. Uh, it's in ARM, it's already in Fedora, but it has no required, so it's a very simple package, and we will package it as RPM. Uh, we were that some package are more complicated, and some package are way, way, way more complicated. So this is really simply stuff we are doing uh, here. Uh, during this uh, half an hour, uh, We will do some stuff, so do, uh, and you may don't understand some parts. So feel free to ask me question anyway. Don't don't uh, uh, postpone it till the end. Just ask me anyway, right now. So you will need this uh, this stuff. Uh, so those packages, Fedora packages, RPM build, YAML, or DNF, RPM dev tools, probably RPM in uh, and patch. Oh, you will not need patch, but it's nice to have anyway. And we will uh, package this software, which can be downloaded from this uh, URL. So uh, please uh, download that, or at least note this uh, this address, uh, so we can continue. Uh, I will try to go really fast over the theoretic part. Uh, that would consume too much time. And I would like to keep it for the real work at the end. Uh, so assume that you want to do RPM, so you don't, you do know uh, why we use that. Uh, so who doesn't know what's what's uh, what's RPM for? Why it's useful? Everybody knows. Super. So, if I would tell at least one part why RPM is still good uh, as delivery of software for me, that would be auditing uh, and security. I know that the RPM I get is signed and I can verify it and RPM do that for me uh, because it will tell me and yell at me that the GPG key didn't match, uh, and I always know uh, which files belong to which package, and if I want to remove package, to remove all the files, that's not true for uh, CPAN, GAM, and PyPy, it, it's only one way, it install it on your file, uh, on, on your disk, uh, and there's no way back, and uh, a mess start uh, growing on your disk. So, okay. I encourage you to read this wiki page, Fedora Packaging Guidelines. Uh, it is a long, long reading. Uh, that is worth. Uh, it's just basically the best practicing practices uh, for packaging. And if you ever have some question how to do something or why we are doing something, it's written there. It's quite long. Uh, 
but definitely worth. Uh, it's for the common cases. Of course, the life is not black and white, so there are always some exception. Uh, speaking of Fedora, there exists FESCO, Fedora Steering uh, Committee, uh, which can uh, waive you some exceptions. So if your exception is same, uh, and you have reason why not do it as documented packaging guidelines, uh, it's possible. Uh, okay. While you can install your software normal way, like make, make, install, uh, the RPM is much easier. It's easy to ease, install, easy to remove, but only with good packages. It's a tool as any other, so if you do it wrong way, you can mess your or somebody else's system the same way as you provide some install shell script you can do the mess in that shell script as well. You can do the mess with uh, RPM packages as well. So if you do that correctly, it will be easy. Uh, dependencies resolution. One of the most features uh, of RPM packages define the uh, resolution, uh, this, the dependency. Uh, there are tools, YAM and DNF, which can solve it. Uh, and install the dependencies for you. Uh, so it's super, super easy, uh, and you don't need to care about that. Uh, okay. Okay. If you start with RPM uh, packages, you usually find uh, some spec file generators or some tools we generate the spec file for you. Uh, there are many of them. Uh, sometimes those spec even work, but remember that uh, something functional is not the same as good, so uh, don't depend on them. It's, sometimes it is good start, and you can tune it up. Uh, you nearly always need to tune it up uh, and never try to um, try to never package pre-built bin binaries try to always build from source uh, of course it's not always possible uh, especially in the, in the commerce uh, zone but uh, in open, open source world, it's, uh, we try to avoid that, and it's uh, not permitted in Fedora. Uh, while you la uh, later find that RPM has some checks during build phase, uh, you can disable them, uh, but it's way to uh, disaster, so try to to do not uh, disable those check, they are for your, they are there for good reason. Okay, some crash course into RPM usage. Uh, there, there are uh, basically two ways how we address uh, address uh, RPM. We use file names. And package names. Sometimes we use file name, sometimes package name. Don't confuse those two. Uh, for example, we install packages with RPM dash uh, i uh, and we use the, uh, pack the file name uh, while when we query the package db we use the package name, not the file name. Uh, again, removal of the package is used uh, with package name, so we, we call rpm e uh, called fish, for example. E as erase. Okay, what we will do and what will be a result of our work uh, is uh, source rpm. Uh, 
that uh, that is file which contain the spec file. That's the stuff which we will create here, and the tar file. Sometimes even bad patches, not in our case right now. Uh, we call uh, we install the uh, those source, source RPM with file name. So RPM uh, RPM install and source name. Uh, while binary packages go directly on your on your disk and are recorded in package DB, source fa source RPM are not recorded in uh, package DB. They are just copied into the RPM build directory. The tar files go into the sources, uh, and the spec file goes into the spec directory. Uh, and they are treated like normal files uh, while you can remove them with the disk command and not using neither file name nor a package name but a spec file name uh, you can remove them as, as a normal file using R, uh, rm and the file names and uh, you will not break anything Okay, if you get the source RPM, you can, uh, and you want to re rebuild them, you can quickly execute this command, rpm build dash dash rebuild, and it will install those, those uh, source RPM and uh, build them. Uh, for building, is used the command rpm build me, uh, dash b a, and the name of the spec file. Uh, it has various phases uh, and you can uh, stop in some phase. For example, RPM build dash BP uh, stop immediately after the patches are applied. Uh, there are other stages like C for compile, which say after the build phase, you will see that uh, in a moment. Uh, and that's all. Uh, while you can uh, build for different architectures with RPM build using dash dash tar target, uh, I don't re recommend that because uh, it will not work with every every command and uh, some uh, software try to detect uh, your environment and uh, run according to that. Uh, so, I don't recommend that. Okay, now we are coming to the uh, more interesting part, RPM macros. Uh, you will see in a moment that we will use a lot of macros in spec files. Uh, they are just like variables in the, in the sh shell script. Uh, uh, they, they can act as integers or string. Uh, at, uh, it's much easier if you always treat them as strings. Uh, many of the common macros are predefined. You can run the RPM show RC command. You can run it on your uh, notebook right now and you will see a long list of macros which are uh, already defined on your system. Uh, if you run rpm dash dash evil um, and uh, macro name, uh, rpm tell you how it evaluates that macro. So it's sometimes uh, useful if you want to know what shared state dir is, if it is var or user or something like that. So. Uh, you will run rpm dash dash evil and uh, evil and it will tell you what what's what's the value. Uh, most of the system macro begins with the underscore, like the bin dir, which uh, expands to user bin, uh, and it's uh, good to remember some of those system macro, like bin dir. Uh, uh, System config dir or something like that. Uh, okay. 
And historically, we have uh, two ways how to define and how, how to use macros. Uh, uh, one way is to use to treat them like uh, shell variables with, with the dollars uh, prefixed. Uh, or you can use uh, person sign and name of the macro. Uh, it can uh, work without those parentheses, but most developers use those parentheses uh, around the uh, macro name. It really doesn't matter which format you will use, uh, but stick to one. Doesn't mix uh, one kind of variables and second kind of variables in the same uh, same spec file. It will confuse other developers. Uh, comments. You very often want to add comment. Uh, we, uh, in spec file, uh, we use the um, hash sign. This one, this symbol. Everything after this uh, hash is treated as comment. Uh, while, while this is true and is treated as comment, be aware that macros are still expanded even after the comment. Sometimes it doesn't matter because if you use, for example, bin dear macro in the uh, in the shell you can uh, it just expand to string which will be treated as comment anyway but uh, you will later not in this uh, session but later you may find that uh, you can use even commands in uh, in those macros which do something uh, which can uh, make difference. So even if you comment, comment out such macro, uh, it will be still executed. Uh, if you really want to comment out the macro, uh, use uh, double person side in front of this uh, of, the, uh, of the macro. So instead person global, use person person global and then uh, the person is treated like one person. And it's a you know, like literal character. Okay. System macros are defined somewhere on the disk. Var leap somewhere. I don't know even. But you can create your personal macros. They are defined in RPM macros file in your home dear. Uh, create a directory uh, right now, then that, that file. Uh, and you may put there some uh, macros, uh, I will tell you later uh, in the next slide. Uh, just be careful when you are creating spec files and using your own macros that those macros are not presented on somebody else's system. So if they are rebuilding your, macro, your uh, source RPMs and you depend on that macro, it will fail on their system. It will fail on Koji, in Copper, etc. Uh, so it's good for redefining some system macros or defining something like you can define macro my home system and in check phase when you are doing test you can see okay if my home system macro is defining that I will do some some system uh, check because it calls some machine in my internal network which is not otherwise available or something like that. Okay, uh, another thing we will need is this stru structure. Uh, RPM build, RPMs, build root, RPM. You can either do that manually or you can call RPM dev setup tree, which do that for you. Uh, so if you execute this right now, it will, it will create this structure for you. You can check that.
And before we proceed, one more warning. Do not ever build RPMs as a root. Always do that as ordinary user. We will do the variety of stuff and maybe even bootstrapping and different stuff. And there can be something like R, uh, RM dash uh, RF slash remove everything in in build root it can be there. Uh, so if you root run that as a root, you will lose your whole disk. Uh, if you do that as as, as a user, uh, you hopefully lose only only some part. Hopefully only build root. Uh, if you use smoke or something like that. So but never do that as root. There are the other reasons, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, there should be slash, sorry. Okay. Okay, now back to the RPM macros file. There exists some interesting macros, like the underscore SMP underscore mflex, which are passed to uh, make files. Uh, and uh, I, ha I highly recommend you to do put there something same uh, which suit your workstation. You can put there dash J3 or L3, which is usually number of CPU or plus one. Uh, then your uh, compilation and build time will be much faster. J is how many uh, concurrent threads should run and L is how uh, you're going to spawn more threads to make file until your load hits this number. So, which is quite similar, but if it, there are, is more EO intensive task, the L, L uh, variable is much better, the option. Uh, and then you can specify uh, some uh, tests. Uh, which you can run and you can define, define some and you can use some tests which are shipped together with RPM or RPM build, I don't know. Uh, we, they are pre presented in RPM dev tools package and there are more than these two tests. You can check them, what they are doing and you can or don't need to uh, use them. And now some real thing. Spec file is just a receipt. It's like, like cooking. You need to know what you need before you start, how to put those ingredients together, and what you will be serving to user. So similar to receipt. And we have some stages Preamble, which defined name, what we will need, then set up with where we unpack the files, build where we make binaries out of the source, install where we put those files into the correct location, clean where we clean up after our build. Uh, it's mostly done automatically, so in modern spec file we don't need this section at all. And then here we decide what we are serving to users. So we define what will go into the main package, what will go into the sub packages, and what, what will be excluded at all. And last but not least, there is a change log uh, where you always uh, put your name and version of your package and you will define what's new in that package, what changed from the last time. Okay, so preamble, that's the real initial section. We'll go deeper into that now. There are name, version, license, which sources this uh, package use, which patches, 
what are the requirements for the build phase and for the runtime phase, uh, and some uh, description for the humans. Uh, if you take some old RPM as example, which I recommend you to you, take some RPM, there are plenty of them, uh, you may see some things which are not needed uh, in those days. Uh, for example, build root is heavily used in old spec files, but it's not needed right now. It's automatically defined by RPM. Uh, so unless you have some reason to redefine that, you don't need to use that at all. Uh, with the exception, uh, if you are doomed to still develop for L5, you will need that. So <clears throat> since RHEL 6 and Fedora 12, we don't need them, but RHEL 5 still need the build root macro, but that's only one year and one, half, one month. So it will be obsolete very soon. Uh, okay. So we will start creating our spec file right now. Uh, spec file is just normal text file. You can edit it with Vim or Emacs, what, whatever you use. Uh, and we usually put, put that file into the RPM build spec directory. So go there and open uh, and create the enum spec there. Well, <coughs> technically speaking, the spec file can be anywhere uh, because the RPM build doesn't check if it is present in the spec directory. Uh, but do not create mess on your hard drive, just put it into the spec drive uh, directory. Okay, if you use Vim, uh, and have uh, some templa templates installed, which in Fedora by default is, and you will write vim uh, anam.spec, you will get something like this. It will open the empty template uh, which you are supposed to fill in. If you don't have it and use other editor, you should start with, with this template and we will start filling in the gaps. Okay, first is the name. So we are creating package for the Anam software, so we will put there the Anam name. Uh, again, for various software, there are uh, guidelines uh, how to name it. For example, Python modules are in Fedora name Python dash uh, a name of the module, similar for Ruby, uh, parallel modules, etc. I will leave up to you to study it, study that in Fedora guidelines. Version. Version, our pack, we are packaging version 1.1, so put the, we will put there 1.1. Uh, this is hopefully, obviously. Release. That's a little bit tricky. We will start with the number one. And every time we will create or do change in the spec file, uh, we will, we should bump it up by one version. Every change, so even if you didn't release that version to public, always uh, make the habit to bump it up, because you never know when the you say, okay, this will not go to the public, uh, but sometimes it's somehow get because your colleagues take it during some break and say, okay, this is ready, I will go with that to public. So every time you do some change, please bump up the release. It's not bad if you skip some numbers, but it's bad if you have two packages with the same numbers. Okay, okay, we... But we didn't use just the number there, we used some weird macro there. So what's the dist macro? What this thing? It's a, it's a macro. 
Uh, this macro exists in Fedora and RHEL, even, even RHEL 5, uh, and it's uh, another identifier uh, to, differ to mark differences between various distributions. In Fedora, it is FC and number of Fedora version. In RHEL, it is EL and version of the RHEL. Uh, it's useful if you have two packages. For example, uh, Python URL lib package. If you have the same package for the Fedora 23 and the same package for the uh, RHEL 5, same name, same version, and even the same release, they are not the same. Because on the RHEL 5 we have Python 2.4 and Fedora has Python 2.7 or even Python 3. So they are, those files are installed, those modules are installed into the different location. So those files, are, those packages are not the same uh, they differ for various distributions. So we added there the this thing, which added the identifi identifier of the distribution. Uh, and uh, what does it mean, the question mark in that macro? It means if defined, use it. If not, defined, evaluate to nothing. Not empty string, but nothing. So, which is sometimes similar, but not always. Summary. Uh, summary is single sentence describing what a package does. Uh, it, is, uh, it should be 80 characters long, maximum, and it should not end with the period and try to avoiding the repeating package name there, like enum is a package which do something. Just, just describe the part after the which do, I'll say it's sequence enumerator. Uh, we will fill in more descriptive part in the, in the description a uh, few months later. A license. License is a little bit tricky. Uh, you put there under which license this package, uh, this software is released. We don't know yet. Uh, so we will put there to do and we will m return to this part later when we will have the uh, tar file unpacked, uh, extracted, and uh, we will have time to investigate under which license it's really uh, released. Group. Uh, well, group uh, is not, uh, it was always useless, but uh, it was for a long time required by RPM. Uh, it's not true in Fedora. Uh, I think it's still required in in Apple, even maybe even Apple Seven. I don't know. Uh, but if you want to fill it in, you can uh, open user share doc rpa groups file, and there is a list of all those groups uh, which are in the system, and you can choose anything from that group. And uh, I think nobody used that uh, anyway, so. Choose anything. URL. Uh, here you put the part where the where is the software homepage. Clear. Source zero. This tag tell us uh, what source file to use. You can put there the uh, address where you can download that uh, source file and the RPMs is smart enough to ignore the, uh, the uh, first part and will just take the base part so it will take this file and 
check uh, if it is located in RPM build uh, slash sources and use that. Wow. Uh, it's always good to use the URL because it's information for other developers and automated tools because they can automatically download this uh, tar and check if the check some match or uh, for somebody uh, some developer who comes after you and uh, if he doesn't have tar file he can see okay where where the previous developer get that sources so it's always useful to have the full URL there. Okay, why we use the macros here? It's, uh, it's because this part may change. For example, the version always changes. So when is the new release uh, available and you are preparing uh, RPM for version 1.2, uh, you want to edit only one place and not uh, changing this string so you can use macro and you have macro version available which have this value because the tag uh, everything what is tag is, is as well macro so uh, if you are doing the new release you will hopefully change only this part and upload new sources and test down and change log In your spec file, you should try to use macros as much as possible. Uh, if you will use them, you will don't need to edit the macro so much. And last from the preamble section is the description. Here you can write some long description. You are, it should uh, be only 60 characters per one line, but you can use as many lines as you want. Uh, so put there something. And we are done with uh, preamble. It should look like this, hopefully. Other items we didn't need for uh, enum. Uh, you can use patch there, uh, which is patch is again the source, uh, and you put put there like patch zero, patch one, patch two, and put there the file names which include the patch. The patch uh, should be present in the RPM build uh, slash sources directory. Yes, question. I assume Uh, yeah, there is a, there is a macro auto setup or something like that, which can up, even apply all those macro automatically, but uh, you, uh, you don't need to use them, and all spec files uh, don't use them, and uh, in fact all the macro spec files use patch, uh, uh, dash p and variable patch zero. Uh, so it's up to you in which order you apply that. You have the variable defined because this defined the variable patch zero. So you can apply that in a, in any order you want. In fact, it's up to you. But of course. Uh, just to have the same spec, you probably want to do that in, in the normal order. And another thing we didn't use is uh, about build requires. Uh, this say which packages we need during build time. We don't need we don't need them for runtime. For example, when we are building the some binary package, we need GCC but only for the, during the build time. You don't need it for runtime. Once it's compiled, we don't need GCC anymore. So here you specify 
which dependencies you need for building. Uh, and here you can specify which version you need. So this say I need package bar in version at least 2.0. Most, uh, then beside the requ build requires, we have requires, which specify the runtime dependency. So those packages need to be installed for running the package. They will not be installed du during build, build phase, so if you need them for your checks in the check phase, you need to specify them in build requires as well. Uh, for most systems, you don't need to specify those requires uh, because RPM is quite smart and for uh, binary packages, it uh, automatically finds that you are using SO files and would generate those requirements automatically. The same for Perl, but there are some languages which doesn't have these automatic requires like Perl, uh, Python, sorry, and Ruby. So, for some project, you need to specify it ma manually. Uh, another is interesting part is uh, if condition it uh, handles differences between OS or some other stuff. You can use condition for variety stuff. But most developers, or most, some developers use one spec for all distribution, for Fedoras, new, olders, and for RELs. So you can see there something like this. If RHEL is equal to 6 or Fedora is uh, smaller than 17, then it requires Ruby 1.8. If it is newer, then it requires Ruby release. So question, why, why, why we use the zero here? Pardon? Yes, exactly. Because we have the question mark here. And if the rel macro is not defined, which is defined only on rel, and uh, vice versa, Fedora doesn't define uh, Fedora doesn't define RHEL and RHEL de doesn't define uh, Fedora macros. So if it's not defined, it's expanded to nothing. So we will have if nothing is equal to six, which will uh, raise syntax error. So do you want to scarf? I already have. You already have. Oh, okay. Uh, reverse to requires or provides uh, usually you don't need to provide because uh, a lot of provides are generated automatically. You always provide the path names which you are uh, deploying. You are provi providing the uh, SO libraries you, you uh, have in package. But you can use so-called general, uh, uh, so-called, uh, how is it called? Uh, <laughs> virtual provide, virtual provides. For example, you can say that my package needs some web server. And it can be Apache, Nginx, Light HTTP, it doesn't matter. So you can say my package requires VVV uh, 3PW server. None, pack, none such package exists. But package H Apache provides WWW server. Package engines provide WWW server. So you can install any of them to satisfy the dependency. If you don't say explicitly which one, Yam or DNF will choose for you uh, which one it will be installed, but you can swap them and the dependency will be still satisfied.
Uh, can, can you can you uh, what is the syntax of that? So uh, like, like it's it's provides uh, semicolon and the name of the provides. So the, the www. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh. Okay, we are moving to the next section. Setup. Uh, it's uh, this section is called uh, prep. This, and in this section we should prepare our sources, which means extract the provided tarball and apply patches if any. So in our case we uh, don't have any patches, so we use just the percent setup dash q uh, say uh, expand 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 it quietly because you don't need to be verbose usually. And here is the case uh, for you. You ask how how you apply the patches. So percent patch zero dash p one apply the first the patch zero that's, that's the macro so you can switch the order and start with the page zero or page, page one or page ten something like that it's up to you how to specify that the The first one is uh, section. It's defined as macro as well. So, it does expand. so if you person side prep uh, is for you uh, the sign that here starting the section prep prep prepare section. There is install section, build section. So anything beside that is part of the section. I'm not sure how internally it is made. If it is macro as well, which take the arguments or something like that, I'm not sure. It's better to treat it like two different things. Like this is special macro which marks start of the section. And this is re real macro setup. The macro is quite powerful. Uh, you can find more here it, uh, it have a lot of options you can specify uh, how the builder should be named or how, how it's named in the tar file if it is named different than name and version uh, but in our case it's, uh, it's quite easy uh, so uh, just this this will work Yeah, question? Here, I have slide special for you. <laughs> so, if we have patch 0 entry in our spec, we would apply patches here. And the patch, uh, say, patch level. And number say patch level. So, how many slashes we are uh, taking away from the file names? Uh, you can optionally specify uh, minus b, like backup uh, and the suffix, and then uh, the original files will be backup. Uh, it's usable if you are creating and you have some problems with your. Uh, with your spec file and you are trying to figure what's happening there so you have the backup files and you can compare it. Uh, just be aware that all those patches RPM applied are applied with fuzziness zero. So it's nothing like it, uh, if patch, normal patch applied with fuzziness seven so if the patch is move one or two or three lines uh, differently, it will find the context and apply that. 
RPM needs to match the context exactly. And it must be located on the exactly lines which are specified in the patch. So, here is what our spec should look like now. So we have the preamble phase and we have prep setup dash q. Now, the next section, build. That's the part when the binaries are creating from the sources. For most so binary software where you do configure, make, make install, you will just configure here and make. Uh, You can use person configure, which again expands to configure macro. You can use RPM dash dash eval uh, and see how it's defined on your system. And you can call make. And don't forget to pass SMP and flex. Because uh, it's not just, uh, because in Fedora, it's not just the. Uh, J or L flag which uh, speed up your building, but there is minus O2 uh, or some hardening options. So this is the option which uh, somebody in Fedora decide we want to have there like recently for the hardening build and compiling. If your package use something else than make file like CMake or scones, uh, you will uh, tune up your spec file accordingly, so you will call uh, scones or something like that in, in the build phase. So after this phase, you should have binaries ready, compiled. You can check it by calling rpm build dash bc, like build and stop after the compile phase. So it will execute the spec file it will exit, uh, it will take preamble, prep step, and the build section, and stop immediately, immediately after build section. So you can go into the RPM build uh, slash build directory and investigate what's there and how to continue. So here is our spec, uh, how it should be. In our case, uh, you should pay pass to configure dash dash disabled dot rebuild. So we are not rebuild documentation. Uh, it's, uh, practice, it's, uh, it's special for the Inum. So, for example, you can pass to configure vid something. For example, if you are compiling Employer, you want to specify which code codecs you want to build. For example, if you are building something for Fedora, you want to exclude some codecs which are proprietary and you couldn't ship. So you pass the parameters. Uh, which it's up to you. So I can basically disable the building compiling of some specific parts of the source code. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next, next phase is install. It's again start with the percent install. And what's happening there? It, you are not deploying directly into the build, uh, into the path. You create, you are in build root, and you have the variable build root, and you should place all those files into the build root location. So, so it's some directory on your file system and in that directory you should create copy of the file system which will be in your package. So if in our case we are creating shipping some user bin and an ARM file so we need to create in that build root user bin directory 
and put there the fi uh, file and uh, the, the binary which was creating, created by uh, during the build file phase. So in our case, we have make file, so we just call the uh, make install, but we put uh, we define the des here, which is the prefix which should be put before every root entry. So it will install into the build root user bin and um, um, man pages into the build root user share man and man dot or one gz or something like that. So in the end, very simple. If you if you have package which doesn't have make file, you are just creating you just call make dear build root slash user bin cp copy uh, enum binary into the build root slash uh, user bin slash. And that's all. So you are basically copying the files into the correct places. Oh. Okay, uh, for some old spec file, you will find that at the beginning of, of the section, it includes uh, clean up of the build root. It's not needed anymore. RPM do that automatically. So you can remove that part even in, in RL5. So. Okay, and we are coming to the end. And uh, what's remaining? The file section. This is the list of the package content, what we are delivering. We add a, when you will be, uh, you, when you will have more experience, you will creating uh, yourself. But right now, we will ask RPM to tell us what should go there, because RPM is willing to tell it, tell us. Uh, if you run, oh, what's, what's the, if you run RPM build dash B A, I like build everything with that spec, it will say you have those files in build root, but you didn't specify them in the in the files. So we will just take them and put them in the files. Oh, yeah, that's what something I want. Oh, okay, anyway. Oh, while some tools like uh, Setup Python, Python Setup Tools, allows you to generate file list and you can pass the file, person files dash uh, f and specify a file which include the list of the files which should go there. Please never do that. Because when new release come, there is new files and uh, you will never notice because then RPM will never warn you that there is something new and you will be creating garbage in your RPM. So always uh, specify that manually, please. Uh, yeah, another thing, def root, def atatr, at, at, uh, macro is always used in, in the old uh, RPMs. It's not needed. Uh, the default is dash root root dash and you will hardly uh, use something else, so um, you don't need to use that. It's a, it's a definition which uh, the first part say which uh, attributes that file will have. If there, if there is uh, minus, it will have the same attributes uh, it have in uh, build root. So if you run in build root, change mode for some file, it will have the same attributes in, in the final package 
and this is who will own that file. Uh, so this is user root and group root. So if you need for some reason that all packages in your spec file need to be used by user Apache, then you can use that. But other, it's usually only few files are have special attributes or special owner and you specify them using percent attr macro so most probably don't need this macro at all we will return to that uh, a little bit later we will because right now uh, rpm build will complain that changelog is missing so we will create a changelog uh, so how? Uh, can I yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, it's not needed. Uh, it's not needed since RPM four point two, which is included even in RHEL five. So yeah, if you are still doing RPM for RHEL four you might need it, but I'm, you probably don't really put it for up anymore. So, change log. That's just, you are telling basically to other users what change in that RPM. Uh, as I said, every change in spec file, you should bump release number, so every change should be documented even in such minor way, minor example changes, something like that. Uh, what you are basically documenting, you are documenting the changing in spec file. You probably couldn't document everything in the, in the software itself. If you are releasing new version, then user are probably should uh, check the release notes of that software. So you are basically documenting the spec changes, not the software itself. So put there the changelog entry using this format and we are done. We can run the RPM build. So. Uh, do you order the change list from US to oldest or the other way around? It should be always the uh, Newer at the top, so with the higher number at the top. So it's always asterisk uh, and this format, and then dash something, and those dashes can be more. So you have you can have more lines of of these entries. Okay, so. Our spec file should look like, like this. So we still didn't have the license filled in and we didn't have the files filled in. Uh, so let's fill in the license. Run rpm build dp uh, and I'm dot spec and you can go into the RPM build, build, and now dash one one. And now it's time to look what's there and investigate the sources. There are the unpackaged sources. So you should go into the files and check the headers. If there is some license, uh, you can check for the license or copying file and check the license. Good part is uh, if you can take copy whole text and put it into the Google search and uh, it will tell you what the license is. Uh, sometimes the, they are subtle changes, so just be careful about that. Uh, it can be really, really tricky. Uh, yeah, I can tell you a lot of funny stories, but probably, probably don't have time for that. So, question? Here? Yeah, the, the, the. No. So, first, the first thing. You. you will 
will find that our software uh, is licensed as BSD. So uh, again, on Fedora guidelines, there is the subsection licenses. If you click on that, there is a whole uh, licenses which are allowed in Fedora and which are free, some which are forbidden. And all those licenses have some abbreviation. BSD is easy. Abbreviation for BSD is BSD. Uh, but uh, some, some are uh, uh, not so obvious. So uh, if you find uh, some license which you don't know, check that page and you will find the abbreviation and you will put, put it into this tag. So, done with this slide? Can I move on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If the uh, source file uh, contain file copying or license, we could, we could specify that uh, in file section. Uh, we can use the person doc macro, which you just do the fact that it will copy the file into the build root, in the user share doc, name of the package, uh, and mark it as documentation file. Uh, in recently, in Fedora, there was introduced new macro, which is license. It act as document, but just mark it as license. Uh, <coughs> they have some special handling for that. Uh, I'm not sure which one. Uh, yeah. So licenses are now marked as license. You don't need to copy the file anywhere in install section. It can stay in the uh, in the root of the build uh, uh, where it is in the build section. And RPM copy that automatically. So, uh, yeah, I'll skip that. Okay, so now it's time to run RPM build minus BA. Uh, so it will go through the build phase, install phase, and it will print you some warning. It print, prints some files, user bin and um, and user share um, um, and um, are presented in build root, but not installed. Yeah, this error. So what RPM does? Just basically that give us the list of the packages we want to install. <coughs> so if you copy and paste this into the file section, you are basically done. But we are smart. I said that we should use macros. So we will alter alter it a little bit. So we use man dear macro and bin dear macro which expand to user bin and user share doc. Uh, and we specify uh, asterisk uh, at the end of the month page. It's because uh, you don't need to compress that. Uh, I think in our case, yeah, uh, make file already created GZ uh, extension, so it's compressed by GZ, but you can put it as enum person one only, and the RPM build, uh, if it finds such file, it will compress it, but using the compression, which is right now used, right now it's probably GZ, GZ still, but probably will be moved sometime later to XZ, so if you will use the asterisk, you will not, you do not need to alter your, your spec file when this change happens. So let, let the RPM uh, compress that file for you. That's all. If you run it, 
Now you should get binary package. We are using no. which one? Uh, name HTML. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can. Yeah, so I said, yeah, use macro as possible. So you can use uh, macro name here as well. And here, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's always a struggle where you should end up because uh, there is macro for, for make, macro for ls. So instead of um, or a CD, instead of CD some deer, you can put person CD. Uh, it's, it's hard to read. Yeah. So uh, yeah, use macro for everything, but stop on some same level, and it's up to you where the same level is. Oh, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. So, okay, congratulations. You have your first RPM creating, created. Uh, next step for you is probably to use RPM lint, because there is tool RPM lint, like fill it and some, uh, some other lints. So if you run RPM lint on your either binary package or the spec file or the source file, it will tell you which problems in your spec is uh, like you can have typo in description, it can be uh, description can be longer than 80 characters, uh, you don't have man page for some binary you are installing, etc. There are a lot of warnings. So while you can ignore them, it's always good to uh, learn what should be done properly. I and mean, in uh, if you run rpm lin e it will tell you uh, how to fix it usually so yeah if you are looking for some sources for wisdom you can download any Fedora package source rpm extract it and look how others do that so learn from the others uh, and final warning, RPM is not re entrance, so please never call inside of RPM spec, uh, RPM itself. Remember the Ghostbuster, what happened when they crossed the uh, streams? Yeah. Never do that. And that's all. Here are some useful links for you uh, if you want to study more. Ah, some questions? start in 20 minutes, uh, will be about some advancing packaging, so some of you are more advanced, uh, I will present some more tricks and tips which are hard to miss in documentation, so you may stay here. Question? Uh, in, during the build section for the use of ink, uh, in the SMP flags is we use to define how many Yeah, try try uh, uh, try to comment it out in in your RPM macros bar and run RPM ll uh, or RPM dash dash show RC, which I will tell you uh, what it will be. And there is 
sum quite the long macro which try to guess the best value according to number of your views. So maybe you can say something about mock that uh, it's useful to try the package in mock because otherwise it uses uh, the packages on your system. So do you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't need to define building quite section and actually because you are using RPM build, not not mock build. Well, so even, even if you use your it, 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 will use, it will use the packages from your system. Uh, so if you if you requ require some package which you don't have to build requires, but it's actually presented on your system, RPM build will proceed. Because for example, if you need to open SSL, it's on your system. And it will proceed because it's present in your system. But there is a tool called Mock, which built into inside root, uh, and it will install only those only very base packages and those which are installed in build requires. So if you are missing something and you actually need it, your build will fail. Now, uh, but um, it's a little bit advanced topic, so. I didn't put it here. Yeah. Definitely, if you are doing building for production system, you should use mock for building, not RPM build. This, this is some tool built on top of RPM build. Another question? No. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Jako SM, SMPM flight zprávě definuje akorát věci kolem paralelního buildu. Protože no, občas, no. občas se musí vypínat. No, tak ještě je tam ten očko určitě, ne? To je ten právě v configu. Tam, tam, má, tam, máš prostě, tam, tam máš C flex, který ti no. nadefinují optimalizaci pro GCC. To je to bude dalším, ale máme v rámci jsou svoje nějaké perilové skripty a je to jen period alebo mohu preskenovat ten perilový skript a zjistit, že tam potřebuje k tomu nějaký perilový modul a hodí to jít ten mesec, aby jsme to zrušili. Perilový modul je tam na stromatom systéme, že on je jako nedetektní při... Existují filtry, ty můžeš definovat, ale jak si s nimi pracuje. Asi zle i před dvoma rokama s nimi existoval. Existují, když se podívám, já se podívám, podívám, vytáme sem pana Google. Uh, existují filtry, ale si můžete, my jsme to dělali s kolekcí, když jsme potřebovali něco vyfiltrovat, takže... Uh, Arko, se dá dát exclude, jo? Jako do file sekce, když dáš exclude... No ale to nechce, že jo? To tam chce, ale jenom v těch dependencích. Filter... Uh, Ježiš, to, to jsem tam mohl dát... Mám to přepnout zase... Auto provides. No, no dobrý, když tak pojďte sem. To je. Auto provides and requires filtering. Uh, jo, tady nějaký. Mm -hmm. Requires Google exclude from, což je nějaký makro, který on si pak vejde a, a jsou tam potom tady. Jo, requires exclude a může se tady dát regulární výraz, jako co, co se bude excludovat. To mu se dává vlastně ten definici, hej, ne ten názor to. No, to je, tam může být cokoliv. To může být, že jo, jak by ta file dependence, nebo to SO, nebo jméno toho balíku, čili to, co vám vadí. Jo, jako třeba nám zrovna vadilo u těch software kolekcí, že tam byly ty requires na ty SO knihovny, takže my jsme potřebovali vyfiltrovat. Jo, takže se to řešilo tady ty provides exclude. Ale je tam dost, dost, to je hodně interní záležitost, která jim nějak nepropaguje, že to je dost, jo, když na, jako v každé verzi, takže my jsme měli problém, že ve Fedoře a v Reus to chovalo úplně jinak. To, že tam, tam pak bylo, že fakt pro Real jsme museli dojít plně jiný balíček než, než pro Fedoru. 
auto provides and requires filtering. Je to kľúčové slovo. Ja, 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 No, no, myslím si, že, myslím si, že se tam to se tam makro to dělá na podle na podle příkony. No, jenom, no. jsem se zkoušel s vámi ten zrovna rozvoj, to zapojit čistý dotaz. Mm-hmm. A to bylo to úplně stejné, tak právě mě zajímalo... Jo, za, za, základní příkony, příkony, základní příkony to umí, protože tam podle mě používá jako pár minus A, takže jako ta hruž sám je to základní příkony. Ale jako, jako, jako právě, že ještě když, když to nemělo jít za to, tak se musel dělat na dvě. Ano, za to jsou takové ty jako, když jedeš moc jako, to samé s tím Dekrebildem, prostě to byl, tohle je zrovna balíček, který já mám internu a mám ho pod kontrolou, jako i vlastně na tom Federa Hosty, nebo mám tam prostě komik Praha, hmm. to sice udělali nějaký dva borci, který to totálně opustili, ale jako, no, mám tam komik Praha, to, takže jsem mohl zajistit, že když budu dělat update na Federa, tak se to rebelnu Praha. A díky tomu, že potom jako vypnout ten dekrebil, tak uh, ušetřím strašnou půdu závislostí. Jo. Jako tam, jako na to, aby člověk uh, vybyl děl mám stránku, tak tam natáhá prostě javu a XSL a tady tyhle věc, věci do, do uh, zdotoutu a jako je to úplně zbytečné. Já jsem si vybyl děl aktuální mám stránku, všechno se mi tam jako textělat. Jako je tam i prostě ten docbukový uh, zdroj na stránku, ale jako je zbytečný to rozhodit, pokud uh, vím, že to má pod kontrolou. No, ještě s tím SMP je to to, to, to jsem právě říkal uh, Mirkovi, že, že ty kontrolou čistě jenom ten paralelní byl. Sem tam se stane, že. Uh, Day by make by je třeba špatně napsaný a e, jako potom třeba ten parování bylo nefunguje. Jako, stane se, že tam třeba některé operace pro, e, proběhnou jako přehozeň. Takže to je jeden z častých problémů, kdy failují prostě buildy e, a blbě se to debaguje. E, ty, ty věci ohledně hard damage flex a tady těch těch věcí, tak jsou v configure macro je právě na definovaný tak si plagy, tak LD plagy, prostě všechny uh, library pásy a prostě všechno, co člověk si dokáže představit, že by mohlo být na definovaný problém, tak je to konfigurovat problém. Jako, um, častá chyba bývá, že lidi používají tečka lomeno configure nebo prostě pouštějí rovnou configure, nepustí to makro a tím pádem jdem tam nepoužívají ty, ty systémové uh, ty systémový hrání věci. A potom Vzhledem k tomu, že to je guideline, tak je to někdo může omlátit tu hlavu a to je to špatně. Je to konfiguru, na kterou se má používat ještě. A když nemáš binární balíky, tak... Ne, ne, ne. <laughs> no jasně, jako prostě u těch chceš, kvůli chceš kvůli těch vždycky. A myslím si, že to je jako ten konfiguru makro. No jasně, jako prostě... Že já třeba dělám pajtní a tak. No, tak to mě potřebuje. Mám na jeho do srdce, čiká. Potom jsem tak jako... Na pláž mě zajímalo ten něco, to zase se stalo. No. Jakým způsobem se... Já mám takové pomakování. A mám prostě některé věci přijeli, některé věci přijeli do internetu. To byla otázka. Některé věci přijdu do Matejky, některé do Zrby, některé třeba do Zrby. Čili se takto masování asi definuje. To se bavu. Pál standard base. To je standard. To je dobrý si podívat. Podívat se, co, co tam je jako desino. Je, jako je to součást uh, standard base, jako to zde. No. A jako v dnešní době už se to čím dál méně dodržuje. Já 
kolem některých věcí, co byly kolem jezu můžu, nebo, nebo prostě těch změn, co se udály ve Fedore, tak o tom se šli proti některým pravidům, které tam byly stanovené. Říká se, že jsou některé ty věci už prostě zastaralé legacy, ale, ale je dobré se tím jako na to podívat tým, jako, a jako snažit se k tomu jako směřovat. Jako vlastně. Takže vlastně, když třeba mám binárku, kterou vím, že nemá uzavu kultě, tak vlastně bylo to dolejt exekujeme do tým nebo jedno. No, a taky uzrovali ty věci, které jsou read only, no, můžu se share. Určitě, ale no, tam byly uživatelské věci, jak se prostě už uživatel by sám o sobě neměl mít uh, fotku. Třeba tam by mělo být to, co teď vlastně se na nás snaží dělat, vlastně pokud máš konfigurák s depotním a val, jako věc má. Jo, třeba pokud se mohl si skonfi, to jsou prostě depotní věci, a které bych neměl měnit, jo, tak to má, tak nemá co dělat prostě teď na to celé. A má to být někde v nějaké že to se nemá dělat, na co máš podívat, a pak se máš na základě to udělat v tom figurách, je to celý, že jo. Což jako je věc, která zrovna tato, která se historicky nedodržuje. No a je, jako armeni ti pak se řeknou, že, že prostě chcou vědět na jednom místě, kde ta konfigurace je, aby se to bylo do LTC, že jsou na to zvyklí. No právě, že jsou zvyklí. To je ta, ta Stejně by tam musel být nějaký synek nebo něco takového. No, no už vlastně že máte jako bude naše rekomu minus PC, že se to zvyklí na konfiguráku. No. no ale to je potom, ty lidi na to nejsou zvyklí. No, takže... no, je, je, to, je to všechno o zvyku a jako spousta těch věcí je, je o zvyku, ale třeba Zrovna ty user movie a takovýhle věci, tak ty, ty mi pak způsobili hodně vrásek jako ve, ve file system balíčku, jo? který musí nedodržovat spoustu těch věcí, co si říkal, jako že never do that, jo? tak prostě já to tam musím dělat. Tak no, jasně. No, zase, takže mám hodinu a půl a když mám, kolik mám slajdů? 27, tak to jsou 3 minuty na slajd. Dobře. Pro mě to bylo přínosné třeba tím, že, že jsem si některé ty věci ujasnil, jak se to teda jako má dělat. Takže viděl jsem několik z těch fajů, dělám, dělám to víceméně tak, že upravím, upravím nějaký... Ale no, to je, já no, jsem teď, to, teď jsem si stahoval i ten enum z, Ferp, z FerpGG z Masteru a říkal, že jsem mě nechtělo psát, a říkal, že to tam budu muset kopírovat, když si to vezmu. No a bylo tam spoustu ta, i takových těch věcí, co tady říkal, že se nemá dělat, jako, no. nebo není třeba build root, jo, tam definované, jako, no. ze historicky, jako viděl jsem ty changelogy, jenom má zrebel, má zrebel někde do Fedory 12, ne, to se na to nešáhlo prostě vůbec. No, to, hele, to, se, to jsem napsal jo. prostě nejdřív z Pepfile, pak mi tam nějaké věci omlátili při review eh, o hlavu, to už jsem se právě nekoukal co. Jako prostě mi nefungoval, eh, nefungovala síť, takže to jsem se chtěl podívat, co mi to tam tehdy omlátili o hlavu. No, a potom už jsem na to nešahal, protože to nemělo význam. No jasně. Dokud to jede, jako, ano, každých deset let je zhruba potřeba, je, to jsem nechtěl tady, jo. No, to... Jako, kdy, když jsem vlastně dostal uh, svoje balíčky, když jsem nastoupil do Red Hatu, tak, tady? taky tam byl brutální tak Timovi Bogovi, který to prostě taky zabalil, víš, že tři, čtyři roky no. na to nebylo potřeba šahat. Takže no, to bylo až, až se to pak vysere prostě po deseti letech, tak prostě na to žádný. Nebo když na to naběhne někdo nový načený, no. víš, jako... Jo, jo, jo. <laughs> tak se tady... Oni jsou ty VGAčkové kabely hodně dlouhé, takže ty projektory to někdy nedávají, když je tam, tam prostě ztratí moc signálů. Já, já, já jsem ještě právě tady k tomuhle tomu základnímu workshopu měl jednou přístup ve stylu zabali, závodní zabalení RPM, kde jsem prostě ukázal, jak zabalím TAR za 30 vteřin. No prostě na prase jsem zabalil TAR. No, Můžeš, pak ne? jsem ukazoval, jak, jak postupně hmm. klínat, jo, jakože to prostě... Uh, jo. jo. No, Mám rád se stát, protože takhle jako v praxi se asi se postupuje, že jo? No. No. Co tady vlastně budu říkat teď? Co by se mělo stát je, že ta dokumentace kolem toho je strašně blbá kodobrátka. Mě, mě třeba chybí spousty věcí, že by tam byl jako odkaz ale podívejte se na tenhle balíček, ten je, ten je zabalený dobře a je to třeba balíček, který obsahuje kvetečku. Kvetečku se balí trošičku jinak než... A to máš v těch guidelinecech, tam jsou právě ty spechy pro jednotlivé kategorie, Python, Perla a myslím si, že tam bude i kvete kategorie. 
A tam jsou právě, jako, jak se to mám dělat? Je to vikina, přesně tak. Teď, teď to je blbý, když jako, když jako, s, jako už lidi kvete jako pomalu odešli nebo odchází, ale, 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 ale uh, pohlídáš to tu chvilku, já se potřebuji skočit na záchod a jo, není tady Ale jako další. v podstatě třeba jako když je to nějaká sekce, kurňa, co to je. No. A tak, uh, tak jako prostě říct těm lidem, co jsou jako správci, třeba Python, jo, tak jako aby, prostě to, aby to tam něco dalo. Aby vybrali prostě nějaký jednoduchý balíček, ty si dal teda konec přestávky, jo. Počkej, já tam, já, počkej, já tady chci ještě projít, co tam všechno budu mít, abych viděl. A to bliká, to je strašně nepříjemné. Já už si to probral. Já tady dostaneme přestávku, aby tam nějaký dobrý kontakt. Jo, dobrý, tak jo, tak tam dej přestávku. Jo, já si pak někomu budeš ti dávat čály, tak jako prostě kdykoliv řekni, ukáž, já tam skočím. Jo. Kdybyste dávali prostě, nechybíš. Když to zavírá, ne? <laughs> Tohle, kam jsem dal ten prezentál, to. Tyjo, fakt, jo. Tohle, teď to nevím. Kam jsem dal prezentál? Tady. tady. A... Jako fakt nevím, jestli tyhle s tím můžeme, nebo nemůžeme používat. Ne? Jako vím, vím, že on zabírá mu už jednu trošku nějaký dával, takže jako asi, asi to je úplně, je to možný možná, ale my jsme tady měli strašně spolu s Pleškama včera. Jo, tady ty nástroje ještě nejsou. Prosím, to je zdený bod. Tady když se dá takhle jako přestávka. Tak se to rozbliká. Jako, jako Slidy si kopíroval, ale to je zdejčka. 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 Slidy